Hey, how's it going? It's Will Graham again. Just coming back with uh, another episode of Sports Games That Don't Suck. Um, this time I've kind of narrowed it down a little bit more so I don't have to go through so many. But anyway, uh, let's get started on this, shall we? First off, uh, sports game. If you could consider that, uh, even though it's a bunch of Neanderthals playing sports type games, they're really fun. It's called Caveman Games. And uh, basically what it is is just there's a bunch of games tailored after prehistoric, uh, you know, themes where you bonk uh, dinosaurs on the head and and uh, it's got a lot of personality and it's a whole lot of fun. Definitely check out Caveman Games. This game, when I got this game back in the late 80s, I believe it was 1988, I can remember that uh, I've seen this game in uh, Nintendo Power, and I thought, wow, the graphics look so amazing. And, of course, it was a Konami game. So I'm like, Jesus Christ, this game looks great, but it's not my style of game. But anyway, I ended up renting it, and I played it all one rainy weekend here in Florida. It happens all the time, so... It was raining all weekend, and I sat there and I played the hell out of this game. Loved it. Right from the start, an airplane pulls in, a big 747 jet, and it says Konami on the side, and then it opens, and there's you waving. Just awesome. It just had so much, uh, it, it, just the graphics, I can't even get over, and the gameplay is so much fun, but that is Track and Field 2. One of my favorite games of all time on the NES. Honestly, great sports game, too. And... Like I always say, very, very cheap. I think I seen this at a reseller's booth in a garage or in a flea market for about two bucks. Then, of course, for the PlayStation 1, uh, this game is a sports game. Um, I know some people don't consider race games sports games, and but it, it to me it kind of falls all under the same genre of motorsports even though this one does not have a motor in it so it's a race game without a, a motors and uh, this one it's called running wild and I'll get up on that one it is a race game that you literally race on your feet and uh, it's by uh, 989 studios and so it uses the crash bandicoot engine and um, it, it's just like Mario Kart, where you get power-ups, you get weapons, the graphics are pretty cool, and uh, but you're running the whole time. And there's alternate pathways, and uh, there's even a single-player mode. Very cheap game, very, uh, a very cool game I never knew existed. But yeah, Running Wild has a bunch of cool characters in it, you know, as far as an elephant guy, a zebra guy, and each guy has their own attributes. And a lot of fun. Check it out. Running Wild. And then last, I told you how big of a sucker I am for fishing games. This one, um, I had actually played first in the arcade, and it was so much fun. My God, I, I would play that game for, I would sink dollar after dollar, because that's whenever it was, you know, four quarters to play games. But um, the Dreamcast came out with it, and that is Sega Marine Fishing. Now, this game also used the... Uh, the fishing peripheral for the Dreamcast. I don't have it. I am going to get it. In fact, as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going to go price them. Because uh, this isn't the only game that used that uh, that uh, fishing controller. But um, this game, a lot of fun. Turns fishing into an arcade style of fishing game. Where, as opposed to the last game I showed you, Pro Fishing with uh, you know by Atlas, this one is more or less... You know, an arcade style feel to it, but it's fun. It's addicting. It makes you want to keep fishing and trying to get a bigger score, like a bigger uh, marlin or what have you. But uh, anyway, yes, check this one out for the Dreamcast. Sega Marine Fishing. All right. Well, anyway, look, that's all I have time for right now. Uh, give those games a try. I swear you won't be disappointed. And don't forget, there are some good sports games out there. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.